All right, everybody, here's our match for the day at uh, 2012 Maryland State Straight Pool Championship. Mike DeShane versus Dave Dana. I'm Alvin with Inside Pool. I'm going to be joined by Sean Wilkie in the booth. <laughs> no, he's walking around. Just messing around, everybody. Yeah, he won't be in the booth. Yeah, he won't be in the booth all day. He just won. So, anyway, just a little jokery there. Day two here on the biggest two paying two day tournament in the country Maryland State Straight Pool and Big Daddy's Billiards. Thank, big thanks to our sponsors Predator Q's, Aramith, Simonis, Kamui. Kamui, Kamui. There's a whole list of others that support in the tournament. We'll get to them. Definitely big thanks to our main sponsors that are sponsoring the stream here. Simonis, Ivan Lee, Aramith Balls, Predator Cues, Kamui Tips, and Chalk. Of course, inside pool, mag.com here, blasting out worldwide across the globe, wherever you're at, whether it's sunny, rainy, snowy, summer, winter. Great to be here with you. Okay. Opening break. Be saying hi to everybody out there on the Ustream chat. Thanks for joining us. All is right with the world, says Road Dog Steve. Good job. Good jobby. Say hi to POV Pool out there. Daniel Bush, what's going on? See who else we got. Billiard Nuts, Denny Walsh. How you doing, buddy? Eagle Trick Shots, Julian. What's up, my friend? Let's see, we got uh, Mikey Fingers out there. Old player. Pocket Cleaner. All our friends. Appreciate you all joining in. And if you can... Uh, Support us on the different forums and uh, Facebook and stuff. We really appreciate that. All right, what's going on, Ozzy? Good to see you. All right, so we're going to need some... You know you have me on the chat now, so you're definitely going to need to keep track of how many balls so you can help me out here who makes what because you know, my friends, my attention span is with straight pull very limited. I got my crayons, got my coloring book. Anybody, anybody who wants to. Yeah, I'd love you to. All right, so we're going to get uh, we're going to get some other commentators in here to help you out that can keep track of the score and do know about straight pool, but uh, definitely like to introduce the show at least. I have one in my car. I don't have one with me. iPhone. All right. Speaking of the iPhone, we have the uh, we have the iPhone app. Ustream. Just go to Ustream app. Get the Ustream app and look up Inside Pool, and it should be smooth for you on the iPhone. If anybody has an iPhone, they can check it out. Make sure it's running smooth. You can hear everything. And so all y'all can watch it on planes, trains, and automobiles, wherever you're at out there. Some people actually sit in the room here and watch it on their iPhone, believe it or not.
Steve Kurtz is <clears throat> having problems with his uh, feed here. He's getting a black screen, and an old player suggested that he go find a 45. <laughs> That's funny. Mike DeShane ran uh, 125 and out yesterday, so I expect him to do something similar with this match, just because, simply because the uh, five and one eighths inch pockets on this table. And we are at Big Daddy's Billiards here in uh, Glen Burnie, Maryland. Great pool room. Rick and Cindy are the owners here. Molinero. Okay, so are you guys getting the things working out there on the chat or what? You getting your computer, something's going on here funny. So we have some people with video and some people with no video that had video before. Okay, so POV pool, change computers, and now his good. Old player is good. BDOC has nothing. I have no idea. I'm going to get a hold of JR. Give me a couple minutes here, guys.
All right. Okay, so now everybody that wasn't having it has it now, right? All right, Steve's good. All right, so who still does not have the stream going? I guess I should type that since you can't, you wouldn't be able to hear me. Duh. All right. Now, it's time to play our commercial. cloth oh look at this wow hmm no oh, he's got a full rack to break how often does that happen how often do you see this kind of break Whoa, what the heck was going on in that camera? Oh, they're fixing the, uh, there's a leak in the ceiling here coming from the AC unit, leaking right on the table. Hold on a second, guys.
All right, so this is a race to 125, I believe. All right, we're here. We're here. I'm Bob Hunter. I'm sitting with uh, Michael Frank. And we're watching uh, Mike DeShane and Dave Dale. Try and bump that five ball into a better position for a break on this shot. If it was anybody else, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. Oh. He, he pretty easily could have bumped it up a little higher and away from that rail, created a good break ball. And he had the 15 down there to play position on, too. Yeah, Mike's not your conventional straight pool player, but he's but he's such a great shot maker that uh, he can be tough to beat. Well, he I, he has the only 125 ball. Right. Yeah. Did, did you watch any of it? Yes, I watched it. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I've never seen that format before. It's teams of four. Yeah. They were playing a very strong team. Uh, Europe. Yeah. Well, the 15 is the best break ball right now. He's probably going to shoot the combination after this 13. See, now here... <coughs> I think the best pattern is to shoot the 10 and get on the 1, then stop off the 1, shoot the 7, stay in that area, and then shoot the 3 and slide down a little bit for the break. <coughs> looks, like the <coughs> looks, looks like that's what he's going to do again.
might have gone too far there. I don't think he's got a nice angle anymore. Yeah, see this. Yeah, this isn't really the side you want to be on, though, to shoot this break ball. So when you shoot this shot, uh, a lot of players at my level end up right behind the rack, right into the, to the, to the, to the bottom. Yeah. How do you get out of that? Well, this one you can shoot a little bit of a low ball with left English, hit the rack, draw to the side rail, and get it back out in the middle of the table. Ball. You're just going to hit the corner ball, the corner ball. yeah, and draw to the side rail and get out. You hit it with a little inside. Now see if he would have had some draw on it and get to the rail there. Gonna have to use the one to break up the that big cluster there. And uh, I don't know if he runs into the to that ball. I think it's the four. No, he missed it. Okay. Uh, it's hard to tell how much angle he's got here, but he might be able to go two rails and get an angle on the one to break him. Maybe shoot the four first. Sure, yeah. Yeah, the longer you wait, the, the fewer options you have once you get them spread out, you know. You, a situation like he just had there, it's always nice if you have, if you can break them while there's still a loose ball someplace on the table that you can play shape on. I wonder if he can shoot the four and... Is that the four? And bump the six out a little bit, maybe? Okay. Uh, now the three is uh, really the biggest issue he's got with these balls. He's going to want to... He's going to want to shoot the three next, I think. I mean, I, I wouldn't leave it any longer. Uh, this is this is not right. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. He still might get out, but he's, 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 he's going to have to swing around two rails across the line, uh, you know, for shape on the six. This is not a... This is the way I might play it. <laughs> if he'd have... If he would have got rid of the three earlier, then he could have done something a little more natural for his break ball position. You know, it's, he didn't have a, anything that was a looked like a great pattern, but 
He's I, I, I don't know what he's going to do here. Has to make two terrific yeah. shots to get in position when you're break ball. Well, when you're a terrific shot maker, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not really an issue. But I mean, so. but it's the angle he needs for the break shot, and yeah. it's up where people are going. Yeah. We get somebody checking on the uh, score and what kind of run he's on here. Well, it, I guess the score is, uh, well, before.
pull that time. Okay, we're back on now. I guess we we were muted for a while there without realizing it. Yeah, right after Dave missed an easy one. So you never know when you're going to get back up. Well, if he's got the angle, he'll be trying to get a shot on that two wall or four or whatever that is. I guess it's a four. to get that 10 ball out of there or the 12 whatever that ball is up the table make room for the 11 to go 12 yeah shoot the 10 will we shoot the 11 next I don't know I don't know if he wants to do that or not no Oh, maybe, yeah, you might shoot it in the same corner. I, I thought you were asking if he would shoot it down the other corner. Yeah, me too. I, that's what I thought he was going to do. Okay. Five and fifteen. So I would say, I would say Dave is pretty close to the, the style. That, Style of play that was characteristic of. Well, he's he's played a lot of Old straight players, pool right. for years and years, you know, and he plays more of of uh, classical style patterns. You know, okay. you're going to see more, probably more real patterns from him than you will from uh, Mike, but uh, Mike is. The better shot maker. So in the end, is that what it boils down to? <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point, yeah. It have can. To, yeah, have it to can. I mean, it, it, it. Yeah, but if, but if you're a good enough position player, you know, you're not going to have too many real tough shots to shoot at. What's this, do we know what the score is here, Mike? Peter, get us the score on the day end. We have Zion Zevi at 11 and Corey Duell at 38. A break ball right break at the moment. 
probably going to try to, at some point, get on the 4 where he can bump the 7 or the 8, whatever that dark ball is over there. Well, it looks like he tried to do that there and got a roll down table. Just going to play it too. He might be able to shoot this 11 and get a good angle to create a break ball here. It doesn't look like he wants to do that, though. Boy, he's going to wait till the last minute to do it. Oh, and then maybe leave the ball in the rack? The cue ball in the rack? Maybe. So, uh... uh I really... We're, we're thinking that, uh... Oh, maybe he goes, maybe he goes in. I, I don't get this. I don't understand why he's playing these balls this way myself. But, uh, Combination and push the war out? Yeah, but it, 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 if he does that, it's not something that he planned before because we, he never got down before and looked at it to see if it would see if it was straight in or anything. Well, it looks like he may end up doing that. She a break shot, hoping that the well, he has a break shot on the two. It's well, it's, yeah, it's, it's not very good. Not I a mean, great break shot. Actually, if he comes down behind the rack, it's, no, I, I, I don't know. No. No. So what will um, what does he do here? Just well, does he come I, off and I try imagine. to clip the corner ball so he gets out or? Yeah, most likely he's probably going to try to hit the area of the the one and two ball, you know. So that the cue ball will, will get over to the side, right? You can't hit this really hard either. If you try to hit it too hard, the follow is going to keep the cue ball from even hitting the racks. So, well, hitting those balls is a suicide, you know. you got to hit further over on the rack to get clear. All right, we'll get to Shane 60. And Dea 36. Dea 36, 37 with the ball he just made. Okay, playing safe. Looks like he might have left him the 14. Davis and Archer matches 30 to 26 with Davis shooting. Looks like the 14 is makeable. I don't know. And he's going to shoot the 14. 14 in the corner. And he. Not today. Not today. Right. So. He's uh, struggling a little bit with his shots. He won't play no. the one and the ten. Well, he, he might play the ten in the bit. Wow. Not a, not a good shot. I thought he'd stay over Trying to bit. come back for either the one or the ten for to break the balls. But yeah, yeah, but it wasn't, I mean, the new cloth, the spin's not going to grab enough to do what he was trying to do there. He, he'd been better off staying over on that side of the table and shooting the ten on the side and breaking them. And wow. Wow.
I'm uh, Michael Frank. And I'm Bob Hunter. And we're watching Mike DeShane, Dave Dea. Bob won the World Championship in 1990, and I'm sure numerous other titles on his long resume. Now a uh, yeah, cue all, maker. They were all a long time ago, though. <laughs> no. Oh, well, everybody gets older. I'm in a the option. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is a cue maker living in Chicago presently. Probably shooting a six ball here. I think that's what I would do. Might be able to bump the 13 up for a break. Yeah, he's decided he liked the five better. And a lot of times when you first get up to the table, you want to make sure you make a few balls and get that run going, you know, before you start taking any chances. He, he might have felt like uh, just got out of the chair, maybe not ready to be cutting that six ball in just yet. That's what makes pool, I think, such a difficult game. And in the sense you could have to sit there for an hour and then get up and have to make a lot of balls to even get back in the in the, in the match. Yeah, sometimes you got to start with a tough one too after sitting in a chair for a long time. <clears throat> so we were, were to give a Average player advice on, on how to improve the game, their game. What what would be the, the number one thing you would advise? Mm, well, the biggest problem that most average or or beginning players have is uh, they don't have the stroke you need. They don't have the stroke you need to do a lot of the things that come up. You know, a lot of things they're going to have to do. The best thing you can do is develop a really good stroke. You know, that's going to that's going to help more than anything. They should spend a certain amount of their practice time just hitting balls really hard and spinning the cue ball, getting used to, you know, moving that cue ball around the table and, uh, you know, being able to do the extreme things. You know, the rest of it gets to be pretty easy once you develop a good stroke. I mean, easy in a relative way, you know. <laughs> The game didn't seem too easy to me this weekend, but uh, I haven't been playing. Well, it does seem to me at, at this level, the, the, the players are not as focused on the shot because they have confidence in making the shot. So they're thinking about where they're going to break the balls and what speed and right. a, a lot of a lot of players at my level are just thinking about the shot. Well, he decided to play that one pretty conservatively. That was sort of an old style break there. Just get a couple of them out in the open and then break them again. I don't know if he's 
can't tell if the six goes in the, uh, maybe the bottom right corner. Yeah, it must. He played for it. And that's what you mean by good strike, because he really, he really did strike that ball. And he went through well, it. Well, he stopped it. Well, he actually didn't stop it. He rolled forward a, a, about a revolution or two, which is a great shot, and that's something that uh, anybody who, uh, you know, a lot of guys don't ever play that shot. They'll try and just hit, roll the ball in real soft instead of hitting it firm and letting the cue ball roll over a little bit more and follow just, you know four inches or something and but that's a shot that you need a lot of times you know so if you if you don't shoot that type of shot you should practice it so that's the right he played it the right way oh yeah definitely because then the ball can't roll off right right and a lot of times you know if you're five feet away from a ball and you need to follow it just a couple inches. You can't just roll that ball in. You're going to follow too far. So when you're five feet away and with a straight-in shot, you need to go forward three inches. You know, you have to shoot it that way. You have to shoot it firm, but slightly above center so that it just turns over, you know, one or two revolutions uh, after you make the ball. Got a little bit of lucky, lucky roll there. there. Otherwise, safety has a ball hanging in the side pocket. This is a little funny to, to play position here. Starting with the scratch, gets yeah. away from it. Yeah. And pretty good angle on the five. Uh, he'll probably go into the balls here try and run into the one looks like the eight is straight if he needs to shoot it he has a nine right. He would want to leave the four, I guess. Or the nine. There's a four. Well, no, no, either one or not. I didn't see the angle right there. High, they're pretty high on the. Kind of low on the rack. Low the four. On the rack. I mean, they're. And I can't tell if the two is in the rack. It's very close. I think he's going to shoot the eight and then the one and then get these balls down the bottom end of the rail. No. Wow, he made those balls worse. So now he's played them again. Yeah. He needs to use the bridge. So, so when you have a, a few balls like that the way they are, are you trying to bump in a certain way? Well, yeah. I, I would hit this with a little bit of inside English, a little bit of left, so you hit the seven, then hit the rail, and then get away from the balls and go over. Well, you just stayed right there, and it ended up being fine. <clears throat> And when there's only two balls and you know you're going to separate them and uh, the first one's not going to move very far, you don't really have to do anything extraordinary to get position. Just trick shots. And the 
one three combination. Well, I guess that two ball must be out of the rack. I think that's what he's planning on using for break ball. So he will try to get but, to the nine. What do you think? Well, he probably. God, I don't know. I don't know what he's gonna. <laughs> I don't know how much angle he's got on the one here, if he has any. He might just draw straight back. Yeah. Oh, uh, he went too far, though, I think. Play the 2-9 combo. i try to put the key ball in the rack. Oh, no, know. there he goes. And we'll be back in a minute. Best he could to get something out of that, but uh, so now right. when you play safe from here, what are you what are you trying to do? Uh, he'll just tickle a ball and get back over on this side of the table where oh I don't think he hit anything. Yeah, he fouled. He just took one off. See now here is where Shane is supposed to take a foul. He took a chance on maybe creating a dead ball there. I mean, there's a lot of things could have gone wrong with playing safe from there. And Dale was on a foul already. And if you, so the heat's going to be on him to make a, a legal shot first. Okay, seems to be, uh, I guess it's 84 of 40 is the score now. Going back and forth, and the rule on three fouls is if the balls are re-racked, you lose... Re-racked, you lose uh, 20. 15 plus one for each of the three fouls. 18 balls. And you got to break them like the beginning of the game. match between Steve Lipsky and Brian Desco. Steve Lipsky intentionally took the third foul. Yeah. So what would be the reason? Well, if a lot of times uh, the balls are just so spread out and, the, and you have no safety to play, you know the guy is going to get at least that rack. Uh, if you try and do anything else, and make uh, and so sometimes you, you, you just sometimes taking the third foul is the right thing to do because you can uh, break them like the beginning of the game, and you got a chance of leaving the guy safe. You know, if you know there's no chance you're going to get the safe in the situation you're in, then you got to take the third foul. 
because there's no telling, you know, how many balls your opponent's going to run on you if you let them to the table. Well, that's what Steve did, and it seems as though he's back in the match. He did the right thing. Played a match in the World Championship one one year uh, where I took uh, third intentional foul twice. <laughs> I got wow. there's two different times in the game when I when I got in just a hopeless situation, you know, there's nothing else to do. And the result? I end up winning the game. You end up winning the game. I might not have if I had done something else and tried to play safe in those spots, you know. And left the rack open for your opponent to run. Exactly, out. yeah. Needs a little more speed here. Wow. Do you remember who you were playing then? I think I was playing Babe Thompson. Okay, we're, we're back. back here. And standing we're behind me is uh, Forsten Holman. I'm sure his name is familiar to anybody who plays bowl. He's waiting for his match to start from the uh, from the Lipsky desk match, which I uh, described as uh, being a very long, long match here. Kind of surprised at the way uh, Mike DeShane's playing here. Of course, I probably did it to him, talking about what a great shot maker he is. I think he's missed more balls in this game than he usually does in a week. in and try and get started. Who's shooting? Alright, did he get up high enough? I don't think so. Probably wanted to get up high enough to bump those balls. Yeah, well, the last hope here is to get just a slight angle on the eight where you can shoot it in, nudge the two ball down behind the rack, and follow with the cue ball a little bit for the right angle to break them. Live here. We're both live. <laughs> so another safe. It's another safe. We might be able to make this eight. I don't think he's frozen to it. Yeah, he's left the yeah, he left him a shot here. Shot, pockets it. There wasn't much he could do position wise there. So when you're when you're in a tournament like this, do you like to rack your own balls? 
Well, uh, no, I, I'd really rather not, especially playing straight pool. So, you know, you're trying to uh, stay focused. And... Nice shot. Hits him, and maybe he'll get a roll out, which he did. That well, was... he got a ball out in the open that he can make, I think, but uh, it's going to be tough to, to get, get another shot, shot after this. Looking at the three ball. Yeah, so uh, if, if if he's got a dead one, that's a different story. But uh, yeah, I, I don't see him uh, running too many balls from here. He may be able to go three. And, uh, well, he may well three can go. The ball must be uh, makeable. Yeah, he's gonna play the three ball. Feels he has a dead one. Oh. Hits the loop. Hits the point of the pocket. Well, this is... You couldn't ask for anything more than this as far as a shot to get started with. The balls are all spread out. Got hangers. This could be any better. It would be if it was a perfect break ball, a <laughs> perfect key ball, you know, nice pattern. He's going to have to do a little bit of work to you know, make a break ball. Get on it. I mean, he could use the 11 down behind the rack there, or the 6. Is he shooting a combination here already? What was that, 10 15? Or is he like six shooting ball. six? Knocks oh, the there's the break ball. There. Okay. He shot the six and created the 11 as a break ball. Yeah. Now, in a conventional pattern, the 13 would be the key ball? Well, not necessarily. I mean, there's no, there's no ball that's going to get you on the 13 real easy, you know. The eight and the five is a pretty good pattern. You know, you can shoot the eight in the corner and then the five in the side and just roll forward a little bit to get on the on the eleven. So when do you start to pick your? It, depends on the layout of the balls. Yeah, I mean sometimes you. Shoot the break shot, and, and you, can figure you, it's you instantly see what the pattern's going to be the last three or four balls. Uh, now he's probably going to end up shooting off the 10 and the 8 here, and then going up table for those other balls, and then using the 13 for the key ball, but. Uh, like to avoid if you can is moving your cue ball long distances you know when you're down to the last couple of balls here you like to have a stop shot pattern and uh, see if he doesn't go far enough here see if he ended up a, a little bit short there now he's got a lot of work to do to get an angle and luckily he got himself dead straight, straight in you know If you go just a little bit too far, where you have just slightly the wrong angle, it's not enough to go to the rail and come back out. So, 
You'd, you'd much rather have stop shot type patterns. When you hit this break shot. Yeah, this one you can follow it, you know, uh, kind of a medium speed. You, or you can hit it real hard if you want to, but there's a chance your cue ball's going to end up Stop at the other, uh, other end of the table. Rolling it all the way. No, uh, this, you're supposed to follow it. And just, it doesn't look like he's following yeah, it, he's though. He's rolling the ball. So you, would you have hit that with natural angles and, and then followed? Well, I, I would have followed the ball, first of all. And uh, try to go two rails and, and get, you know, halfway back up the table again. He's got a little bit of a problem already. He's going to have to shoot. Too well. Kind of a tough shot. Uh, maybe the, the four, four or the eight. Is the eight going aside? Yeah, that's what he's shooting eight in the side. That's it. Yeah. have a chance to try to bump the one up here to make another break ball on this side of the rack. I don't know if he's going to... Yeah. Now he's got to go into the balls. All right. Well, well we had a safety ball with the one, so he's going to yeah. have to use it. Looks like the three ball is going to be the break. Holy smokes. Oh Holy smokes. You know, I, when I saw him stroke it high like that, I was thinking, you know, it, <laughs> that, that was a possibility. Yeah. Well, he must have been pretty straight on it. He's probably trying to cheat the pocket a little bit and let the cue ball hit the end rail. Wow. All right. So there's some uncharacteristic misses here. Dave will probably shoot the six, and then the two, and, uh, and then maybe the five inside. Yeah, I thought he'd try and get over on the other side of the table, shoot the five on the side next. He, he kind of nudge these balls a little bit, and uh, he's got a tough shot to shoot. Hmm. Well, still got two problem balls. Uh, he's going to break those up right now. Didn't really come up high enough for a break ball. There's probably a 14 in the side. It's going to be the break. Shoot the five last. No, he's trying to. Oh, there he's made it. Yeah, this is scrambling, though. You know, you don't like to be doing that kind of stuff when there's just a few balls on the table. All right. And he just wants to be underneath the eight, just a hair, so he can slide over for a break angle. Take a minute to thank the sponsors of the tournament. Simonis and Ivan Lee, Aramis Balls, Predator, Nick Varner, Champion Billiards, Jay Preacher Cues, Nate Selinski, Peter and Sandra Sears, Rick and Cindy Molinaro, 
Big Daddy Billiards, Peter Burroughs, and Megan Forth, Q and Case, Lucasi Hybrid, APA Washington Area, Felipe Q's, Q Sticks International, and Ralph Rubin. Like he's going into the balls here. Two balls, a pretty good break ball. Be able to shoot the combination now and bump that seven over a little bit. No, he doesn't want to do that. That Davis. The score is 105. Dave Day to 55. Or to shame, that's approximate score. Still with a few racks, Dave. Seven ball. It looks like, uh, and then they'll probably play the thirteen after that. If he can draw it back enough for you. Ten side, I guess, and then the five for the long distance key ball. <laughs> so we know that uh, Dave needs this rack, partial part of this rack to. If he had 105 before the rack, that would put him at uh, 119. Right. So, so he'd need six, six if that score was yeah, accurate that we were given. Right. Not too much angle here, but if he only needs six, he doesn't need a big splatter and break. He does need to get away from the stack, though. He didn't. Uh, you have quite enough draw on that to get the cue ball up table. This is going to be, even if he makes the five, he's going to have a hard time of getting position. Well, he makes a good uh, shot on the five. Did not get. The well, he must. He must have got out there. Oh okay. yes, he looks like he's shooting. He the Fourteen. Yes, he did. Okay. Now, if he needs three, that means he's still got to do a little bit of work. Two open balls. Did he shoot the 11 now and go into the 1? Open up uh, maybe the 10? I gotta tell you, I would have never thought of that. No, I really wouldn't. I would have played the two shots up there and maybe played the one straight in the corner. Oh. But that's why he's in the 4. I don't know if you can see the 9. If not, we might still have a game here. That's right. Like uh, he's gonna shoot a long shot, jacked up over the rack. Doesn't like it. Probably gonna take the tough vote coming back for a long cut. Yeah, just roll it in, cinch it. 
good shot under pressure there. Yeah, but he hit. Oh, he came out great. <laughs> so we assume he's getting very close. Okay. Now well, there's another reason he went in the balls. He needed more than we thought he did. Yes. Still not out. We're getting. I think we're getting some bad information <laughs> over here. Sounds like it to me. I wonder, if Michael. The, I, I think you're absolutely right. I wonder if he had the, oops, the scores backwards. It seems that way. Certainly playing for a break shot. Either that or he had... Yeah, I wonder if it was just a shame that has 105. Okay, we've got Michael Frank and myself, Bob Hunter, here. Not really sure what the score is in this match. We'll have the score and correct score in a moment. We know we have uh, new viewers, so Bob Hunter won the World Straight Pool Championship in 1990 and has a long resume of impressive. Okay, Shane was the one that had 105. Uh, the, the score is uh, 105.86 at the moment. Straight pool players used to this kind of pressure. spot he didn't want to land in. Yeah. I don't looks like the eleven's makeable. Here you go. Alright now he's probably looking to shoot the two, one and three last. Get on and get on the ten or the twelve, whatever that ball is there. It's a 12. Can't, can't tell. That's 12? 12. Okay. No, I'm sorry. It's the 10 that's got the break ball. Yeah. The 12 is up by the... Yeah. So he's going to he's gonna have to try and get on the strike ball that's near the pocket now. There. Yeah. Now he can go 2, 1, 3, 
13 and get on the brake pole. I think he got straight as he wanted to be. He might have to bump into the three now. Well, change the pattern a little bit. And now he's got the wrong angle on the 13. So this is a problem. So he's hoping to play the 13 three. Take it. Ooh. Wow. That is <laughs> really, really risky what he tried to do there. got anything other than shooting the 10 and trying to draw the ball to get back up to the middle of the table. Oh, he's got to do it right-handed also. He's left it. Yeah, he's got to go around. And he is... Yes. Is that playable? <laughs> well, if you can hit the rack, yeah, it's... I mean, the ball is play it yeah, is makeable, hanging. but I don't know if he can hit the rack. It, it, I mean, it, it looks to me like uh, his only chance of hitting the rack is to follow it with the inside and go two rails and hit the rack from behind. There like you that. go. Yeah. Exactly. Good call by Bob. Uh, uh, now he can shoot the 10 inside and then... Uh, the 11 and break them again. And then you probably cue ball will hit the balls, go to the side rail, slow spin, come up above the 8. Looks like Dave is dead in stroke here. And you can go into him again now and follow this. Make sure your cue ball gets through everything. He's at a pretty, pretty fast clip. Yeah, he always looks pretty relaxed. Plays like he's practicing. Some, a lot of the best players uh, I've seen play that way. Earl is a good example, you know. It's fast and fast and loose. All right, gonna shoot this ten ball now. Or is that the ten? That was Above not really what he wanted to do. Was at 84? Was that the score? 85. He was, he was at 86, I think. 86. This rack just put him at 100 even. Oh, he's got to make a pretty good shot here. Wow. Well, I put him at 99 at least. I don't, I'm not sure about 100. <laughs> What otherwise was a picture perfect run on yeah, I'm sure he's not too happy about that. There's no way he should have uh, not gotten through those balls into the next rack. Should be 105.99 right now, I believe. kind of discussion about the score at the table. Well, I believe it's 105 to 99. What? 
Well, they, they're probably going by what we've been telling them, and we haven't been right yet. <laughs> what is it? 105 to 113. 105 to 113. Wow, Dave is uh, less than a rack from getting out. First time I played Mike DeShane was in a straight pool tournament, uh, and uh, he ran a 55 and out on me when I needed six or four or something like that, and it was a it was a pretty crazy 55 too. <laughs> he was all over the place, cutting rip, cutting razor thin cuts. Well, I had the same experience, but I didn't I didn't get to. Uh beat me 100 to 4 we're at 97 okay so he made a ball he's got a 106 right he's now 18 more can he see the 9 I think so Probably rather shoot that than the eight. Now if he can see the nine, he's, he's sure to shoot that. Probably shoot the eight. Try and if the thirteen goes uh, past those couple of balls there, he'll probably shoot that next. And it either doesn't go or he's got something else in mind. Maybe he's going to break him with the fourteen here. He's going to go into him right here. Yeah. I, I he didn't, didn't like I didn't that pattern, I could tell. No. I, I the, if the 13 wouldn't go from where it was, then where the two ball was before uh, would have been a better ball to break with than the 14 was. I mean, you get a little bit of a bad roll here, but still. Should be a routine. Is it eight, though? Is that the eight? Or the seven? The ball near the spot. I think it's the eight ball. Well, if that if that goes, you'll probably shoot it now. And maybe roll into the 5 and 11 and separate them a little. Uh, unless he's got too much angle for it. Can't really tell. Shoot, shooting maybe the shooting angle. the 10. Yeah. And the 6, you got to get that out of there so the 11's makeable in that other corner. Probably end up shooting a combination to take care of the two and ten or two and fourteen, whatever it is. See here, he's going to push balls over near other balls, and he might create new clusters. So. 
sometimes it's what you have to do to get through the through the rack, but uh, it's not exactly ideal. Well, in the overall match, is Corey Dole and Mika Inman advances to the next round. Anything to shoot at here? So he's going to twist this 11 a little bit if he wants to play it. So is this a shot you just spin into with a lot of... Depends how it's laying, you know. I mean, it might be the only way to make it is to... He, he might have to curve around the 13 a little bit. I can't tell. And I can't tell if there's really even room to make the 11 on a normal stroke. Oh, he, wow. He almost over-twisted it there. That ball hit the bottom side of the pocket. So Mike Chang gets himself out of a little trouble. Well, he's still got, he's still got, he's still a, got a little bit of trouble. He still has a mess there, but... So I don't know if you can see the 10. Well, and that's it. The 12? That's 12. That 12. That? It's a 12. Okay. Apparently you, you can see you it. You can see it. So there. So he scratches scratch. on that shot. Wow. Yeah. So... Well, we've all had that feeling before. So Day is going to be shooting a 12 or, oh no, two ball. So Day at 113 needs 12 balls. And I, think he, he, I think he needs 11. 11. And, uh, and, and Mike would have netted five out of that. Oh, boy. Well, looks like he's got the two on the side. So Mike would be about at 110. And the 14 on the side. Maybe the eight. Does the fourteen go past the thirteen? If it does, he should be. Uh... Yeah, it must. Okay, so fourteen is a key ball. Well, he had a good angle on it. Good angle for his break shot. Just four or five balls, and I'm sitting here with Bobby Hunter, who made custom cues for a long time. Yeah, 20 he's, years. 20 years, and uh, almost. He's now working out of Chicago, and it is huntercues.com.
How many did you get out of the last draft? Like, do you remember? I think it was, I let's see, it was one, two, three, four, five. Must have needed six at the beginning of this racket, That's what I, I think. believe. So. I think six is right. I think six is right. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, there's four down. I think he just needs these two. Dave, take a little more time here. I think he's he only needs two. He's counting to make he's, sure. Yeah, he's... We'll find out here. If he shoots real quick, he probably just needs the two. I'll catch the six. Yeah. And this is game ball. Oh, wait a minute. He's... No. He hasn't shot it yet. He must need another one. And 14 inside. Yeah, 14 in his line must be game ball. Nice stroke, and that's all she wrote. It's the end of the match. It's a great match in some ways, and in other ways, uh, not well, so pretty. I'm sure Mike DeShane's not real happy about the way he played there. He yeah. just, I never saw him miss so many balls. He's usually really, really accurate shot maker. It's probably because I said something about it. You know, I jinxed him. I don't know. I think anybody can stroke goes off and struggle, struggle through the match. Well, for Bobby Hunter and myself, Michael Frank, we'll uh, sign off here. All right. And, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be back shortly. Talk to you later. All right, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us out there. Hopefully, the stream is working better. We adjusted the settings and all that, so...